Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Kristen. This is Starfish. Thanks for checking out the Kristen Starfish Show. Today, we're going to learn about the cutest things on the reef. Yes, these are the baby fish. Now, in marine biology terms, we call them juveniles. What's cool about juveniles is when they grow up to adults, they can look completely different. So let's go meet the babies and the mummies of these fish. Here we are heading out to the reef. Now it's time to get in the water, put our regulators in. Let's take a dive. That's how we breathe underwater. Here we've got our babies, the harlequin sweet lips. These are the cutest fish on the reef. How many white spots do they have? Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, I see one more, seven, seven spots. Now harlequin sweet lips are known for their beautiful striking patterns that are often bright orange with lines and spots. They can grow up to two feet in length. That's huge. Now you know what? They're actually carnivorous. They like to eat a variety of small fish, crustaceans, and other little invertebrates. They can even live up to 25 years, which for a fish is a really long time. Harlequin sweet lips are mostly in the Indian and Pacific Oceans on coral reefs and lagoons. Their body does that funny shaking as it swims to mimic poisonous flatworms. But they're also just a really bad swimmer when they're that small. But it's a pretty good way to have as a predator defense. So maybe no one will want to eat you if they think that you're poisonous. Yeah, I love his little wiggle there. And here he is a little bit bigger, almost kind of like a teenager. And here is a mummy or daddy sweet lips. Thanks for learning about some fish with me today. I hope you enjoyed the dive. It's always so exciting on a reef to see these little tiny fish. They're so hard to find. Gee, guh, groper. You know, starfish, sometimes if you're a tiny fish, you do have to go hide from the big predators or you might get hurt. But a lot of fish together make a school. And if you're a school of fish, you can actually make yourself look big enough to scare off those big angry predators. So remember kids, sometimes if you can get a group of you little kids together and say no, stop the bullying, that's enough to win. All right, so let's be strong together stand up as a group and say no. All right, I think it's time to go and yes, let's see what sink or floats. Time for the buoyancy test. Okay, time for another episode of the buoyancy test. Yep, that's right, we're gonna see if things sink or float. Okay, I've got two of my favorite characters today. We've got Spider-Man! Now Spider-Man's got a pretty heavy head. I don't know, do you think he's gonna sink or float? Hmm, who else do we have? Owlette! Do you like swimming? You usually like to fly. All right, Owlette, Spidey, who wants to go first? Me! Okay, Owlette. Ready, time to take a dive. Oh! Owlette sinks! She's not a very good swimmer either. Okay, what do you think, Spider-Man? You're pretty heavy. Let's go, sink or float. Whoa, big splash. Also a sinker. Well, today, both Owlette and Spider-Man sink. Thanks for learning with us today on the Kristen Starfish Show. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. 
Remember, you can email me anytime at drkristenstarfish at gmail.com, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, in a world of scary sharks, let's all be starfish. Thank you for letting me into your home. I'll see you soon. Welcome to the Kristen Starfish Show, the show that takes you on exciting adventures through the oceans. I'm Kristen, this is my buddy Starfish. Today we're going to learn about one of the most iconic predators in the ocean, and that is the white tip reef shark. Yeah, sometimes sharks can be scared, but they're super important at maintaining the ecosystem dynamics on the reef. So let's put on our mask and snorkel. Time to take a dive and learn about white tip reef sharks. Thanks for taking this dive with me. Yeah, we're here to learn about some white tip reef sharks. Oh, that's the signal for shark. Yeah, and today we're venturing into the captivating world of white tip reef sharks. These predators have a vital role in the health and balance of these underwater kingdoms. Now, how many white tips does the shark have? One, two. Yeah, they have the distinct white tips on their dorsal fins. Yeah, those are those upper ones and the tail fin, which makes them easy to recognize on the reef. Yeah, one of the remarkable traits of white tip reef sharks is they have a habit of actually sleeping during the day. Yeah, one time I actually came across one and woke it up. They often rest on sandy ocean floors or in caves to conserve their energy. This behavior is known as yo-yo swimming, where they alternate between rest and activity during the night. Whoa, how many jellyfish can you see? Yeah, just one. Okay, now these sharks are stealthy hunters. Their slender bodies and distinctive white tip fins allow them to maneuver gracefully through the reef hooks and crannies where they prey on small fish and invertebrates. Now, what specialized cell does a shark use to hunt? Yeah, they're electroreceptors. They can detect electrical signal in corals and even under sand. Whoa! Now, white tip reef sharks are integral to coral reefs. Yeah, they control the population of reef dwelling prey species. They help maintain the balance of this underwater world. Remember, they may look a little intimidating, but they're actually quite friendly and important to our oceans. Now let's go meet a few more shark friends. Do you know what kind of shark is swimming? Yeah, that's a leopard shark. Whoa, and I see a shovel nose shaped head down there. Do you remember that? Yeah, it's a shovel nose ray. It was right in the sand. Oh, and another shark is laying next to them. It could be a gray carpet shark. Wow, there are so many different body shapes in the ocean. Okay, that ends our dive. Remember that the ocean is a treasure trove of mysteries waiting to be found. Keep exploring, keep learning, keep being engaged, and always be curious about what's out there and come explore with me. Thanks for taking this dive. H. Humpback whale. The creatures in the ocean are amazing. So many of them have a cozy shell that they get to go in. Just like a hermit crab can retreat into his shell to find a safe place, you have to make sure you can find your cozy safe place so you can go if you're feeling overstimulated to calm down. So whether that's a quiet corner in your room or cuddling up on your bed with a book, I hope you can find your safe space too. Okay, I'm getting a bit hungry. I think it's time for afternoon tea, one, two, three. Thanks for joining me today on another episode of Afternoon Tea, one, two, three. Yep, this is where we combine my favorite activities, math, counting, and eating. 
What kind of super food do we have today? Well, this is our super fast food. We've got some broccoli and oranges. Yum. And who's our special guest? Hey, Starfish, how are you doing today? Who did you bring along? <gasps> Great White Shark. Oh, how are you doing today, buddy? You doing good? Must have had a big swim to get here. Okay, you look really hungry. Should we start with our oranges? Okay, let's count them first. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine oranges. Okay, I'm gonna have two. What about you, Starfish? You want two as well? Okay, two for you as well, Shark? Okay, well we had nine to start with. I'm gonna eat two, Starfish is gonna eat two, and Shark's gonna eat two. That means there's six that we've taken away. So nine minus six is, you're right, three. One, two, three. Okay, ready? Let's eat up, guys. Mm, these are really good oranges. Remember, we don't want to talk with food in our mouth. Okay. That was super yummy. I'm super full after those oranges. But we still got some broccoli. Who would like some broccoli? We have one, two, three broccoli. Okay, you want one starfish? And you're gonna have one too? Very good. I think I'm too full. So let's see, we had three broccoli. We've taken away one for starfish, one for shark. So three minus two. Yep, there's one left over. Yum, that was so good. Thanks for joining us on Afternoon Tea. One, two, three. Thanks for being part of the Kristen Starfish community. Keep inspiring others to make the world a better place. I sure hoped you liked diving with me today. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I can be reached anytime at drkristenstarfish at gmail.com. And remember, in a world of angry sharks, let's all be starfish. Take care. Welcome back to the Kristen Starfish Show. I'm your host, Kristen. This is my trusty stuff sidekick, Starfish, who loves learning about the ocean just as much as I do. I have an exciting episode today where we're gonna learn about clownfish. Yes, we're gonna explore the unique behaviors they have, that exciting relationship they have with their host and enemy. So let's get ready to swim with the clownfish and take a dive. It's time to take a dive. Today we're embarking on an adventure to explore the colorful world of clownfish. Our journey begins in this bustling coral reef where these tiny but charismatic fish call home. Yeah, now clownfish are also known as anemone fish. They have captured our hearts in these vibrant colors and intriguing behaviors. Yeah, clownfish come in lots of colors. Okay, how many fish can you count? One, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa, six of them. All right, let's start with something super cool. Clownfish have an amazing talent. They can change their gender. That's right, when the leader of their group, which is usually a female, is gone, the largest clownfish, the male can become a female. It's like a fishy superhero transformation right on the reef. Wow, okay, what color is this clownfish? Orange and white. What color is this clownfish? Yeah, a red one. Now only certain clownfish can pair with certain anemones. Yeah, and did you know that daddy clownfish are really devoted fathers. I mean, just ask Marlin from Finding Nemo. Yeah, they'll guard their nest and prepare it for the babies. Now, clownfish are also omnivores. 
Yeah, they eat plants and animals, mainly algae, zooplankton, but also crustaceans. Yeah, their anemone can provide shelter from their predators. And the clownfish, in return, remove the parasites and drive away intruders. Now both of these species actually benefit. Yeah, it's called a symbiotic relationship. Wow, and there you have it, fellow ocean explorers. Wow, the world of clownfish is a truly magnificent place with their symbiotic partnerships, gender changing abilities, and their vibrant personalities. These tiny fish play an important role in the ecosystem, adding a dash of color and a splash of character to our coral reefs. As we wrap up our underwater adventure, remember there's always more to discover beneath the waves. Keep exploring, keep learning, and always be engaged. Thanks for taking this dive with me. I, Ira Kanji, Today was one of those days where I was super overwhelmed and I was having a little bit of a freak out. So I want to teach you something that's kind of similar to the starfish breath. And we're going to call these whale breaths. So whales are really big and they got really big lungs. So if you're going to take a whale breath, you breathe in super slowly into your really big lungs through your nose. And then I want you to think of your mouth as the air hole and think about how slowly you can push the air out of your air hole as a whale. So let's breathe in through our nose. Whoa, that was a really good whale breath. Let's try it one more time. Wow, that was even better. Just some deep breaths like that. Our whale breaths can really help calm us down. All right, now that we're feeling more relaxed, I think it's time for our buoyancy test. Yep, let's go see what sink or floats. All right, we got another buoyancy test today. Yep, that's right, we're gonna see if things sink or float. Okay, what do we got? Dino Popper. All right, Dino Popper, you're pretty light. What do you think? Sink or float? And ice cream cone. Also pretty light. These are the ones at the beach where you can make little sand ice creams. Okay, let's see. Sink or float? Ready, T Rex? You go first. He sinks. I was not expecting that. Okay. Ice cream, what about you? Sink or float? <gasps> Floats. It was pretty light, I was expecting that. Okay, so on today's show, Dino Popper sinks, ice cream floats. So I guess if you're doing any popping in the ocean, make sure you don't drop it. <laughs> All right, see you again next time. Well, join us next time on an exciting venture on the Kristen Starfish Show. Keep swimming and shining like the starfish that you are. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. And remember, in a world of angry sharks, let's all be starfish. Take care.